I therefore, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And we're speaking on those different types of prayer. And we talked about, right, the order there in praying, that supplications, prayers, where the word prayers there means worship, and in session and giving of thanks, be made for all men. So we explained what a supplication is. And we said a supplication is when you make your request, you petition God, based on where there's a specific request. Esther chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says, When Mordecai perceived all that was done, he rent his clothes, and he now um, sent them to meet, verse 9, and Hattach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spoke unto Hattach and gave him commandment on to Mordecai, saying that all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king, into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may leave. But I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. And what we said was that the book of Esther was a type because that's the only book in the Bible the name of God was not mentioned. So it's all typology, which means the people are representational of some character in all right, the totality or canon of Scripture. And so Esther is a type of the church. Vashti, who was the first queen, was a type of Israel that was refused. Now, the inner court here, it shows that you can't come into the inner court except you are called. And Mordecai says, whosoever goes into the inner court in the time of danger shall have their upper hand. The Bible says, no man taketh this honor unto himself, except he that is called of God. You go into the inner court, and the king stretches forth the scepter of his kingdom unto you. So Mordecai encouraged Esther to go into the inner court, and there is an open invitation for the church, when you are facing any situation, to come within the inner court. And the Bible says in chapter 5 and verse 1, Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel, stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house. And it was so that when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out unto Esther the golden scepter that was in his hands. And so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then the king said unto the queen Esther, What is thy request? It shall be given unto thee up to half of my kingdom. And Esther answered and said, If it seem good to the king, let the king and him and come this day unto the banquet that I've prepared for him. And the king caused Haman to come. And the king has said in verse 6 unto Esther at the banquet, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. What is thy request? Even unto half of my kingdom shall it be performed. And then Esther said, My petition and my request is this. And then she made the request. So that is a supplication. A supplication is a petition, all right, where you are making your request 
specific request known unto God. Now it's based on the scepter of the kingdom that you have touched. Now the word of God is the scepter of God's kingdom. So you come into the innermost courts of God in worship when you are confronted with a situation. And we said what begins to happen is the Holy Spirit now starts assisting you in this supplication. So what he does is that he shows you the areas in the Word of God, what the Word of God has to say concerning your situation there. Or if you have friends there in your spiritual cell, then you all consult to find out, all right, and then the Holy Spirit assists you in that to find out what the Scriptures has to say concerning that particular situation. Now, here is the starting point. Jesus said, my judgment is just, for I do not my will, but the will of my Father who is in heaven. In other words, you can't go wrong when it's the execution of the will of the Father. What the Father has in store, the Bible tells us, is exceedingly abundantly above anything you could have asked or thought. So we go into the innermost courts in worship. She puts on her royal apparel. The royal apparel is not an apparel of mourning, but an apparel there or garments of praise. That is, you count it all joy. This is an opportunity for the glory of the Father to be demonstrated in your own life. So the first thing is going to that innermost court. You have been invited into the innermost court. Haman, which was a type of the adversary Satan, was in the outer court. All right? So whatever is going on in the outer court is what we see with our eyes. That's what's on the external. But there is another conversation in the innermost courts there. And so you go in there with worship. Very important, right? Now, you don't pray outer court prayers. Outer court prayers just mean that you are guessing. In other words, you're just saying, well, you don't want to let us pray, right? In a most court, it means there is a contact with the scepter, all right, the, 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 the means of dominion and rulership, which is the word of God. That I can just on the outside just be praying my own ideas. But I can go in right there in worship. Like what Paul was doing was just praying his ideas, may this thing depart from me. And then he went in and through the courts of God and there made contact with God, right? And then God began to reveal to you from the scriptures that this is what my word has to say concerning this particular thing. So they went back to their company. The company found Psalm 2 was the specific word from God for that situation when Peter and John were going through things. And the minute they found Psalm 2, it spoke to them, telling them, but why do the heathen rage and the kings rage and the heathen imagine a vain thing? And they said to the Lord, let us break their bands and cut in asunder and all of that. They said themselves. So they took that and they said they were now going to pray about it. So first approach is that I go into the innermost courts there in worship. I go there praising God that there's an opportunity and asking came up for revelation. So I know what to ask in particular. That is my request. So I can now ask and be specific according to his will. And so the supplication now becomes, I now ask for certain things according to the word of God that has been revealed. If you have a case and you go to meet a lawyer, right, you might be thinking things. It's the lawyer that tells you this is the position of the law concerning what you are going through. And here are the damages we can claim. Are you following what I'm saying here? 
That is, you can claim uh, damages here and a restoration of what is lost. The same way you can be in a situation, the Holy Spirit, as you advocate, now advises you as to the position of spiritual or scriptural law on that particular situation. Now, if this is not done, I'm saying that there is no basis there for you to expect that there will be any results, and you will know in your heart when you are praying that that prayer has no substance. Are you following what I'm saying? You will know, and it's just, you're just throwing the rock of the dice, and then what happens is after I know, I say, well, it didn't work. I don't, you know, because if the lawyer comes and shows you, all right, the portion of the law, as he is unveiling the law to you, you within yourself will begin to see by your own self and you begin to have experiences of enlightenment that this is the position of the law concerning this particular thing. So you submit yourself to God in worship and the Holy Spirit shows you the position of God's word concerning that particular thing. And God reveals it to you as much as Paul wanted Israel saved. He went to God and God showed them the position of the word concerning the salvation of Israel and said it cannot happen now. No matter what you are praying, Israel must be blinded for a season for the Gentiles to come in and this is what will happen. If you want to see my power now, forget about Israel and go to the Gentiles I sent you to. Do you know what I'm saying? So you go there and God shows you, this is my position concerning this particular thing. Let me tell you this. The Bible didn't say we should confess Jesus as Savior and he will be Lord. It said we should confess him as Lord and he will save you. You hear what I said? The Bible talks about some that crept in who turned the grace of God into lasciviousness, which means careless living, denying the Lord that bought them. In other words, somebody paid the price and he is your Lord. If you hire a person that you are not even, you didn't even buy the person, and you sit down, and the person just, let's say the cook, all right, the person just comes and cooks what he wants to cook. And says, come and eat. First thing you ask him is, are you cooking for yourself or for myself? All right? Someone says, I've come to drive you and says, he's driving you to where he wants to go. <laughs> Enter the car, let's be going. All right? Which means is to take you so where you want to go. Now, if you will not accept the will of God, then you are either saying you know more than him, or really you don't trust him. Are you following? I'm just like somebody held, and it's the truth, right? It, so, I mean, this is, this is a story, but it reveals truth. Said he was falling from a tree and held onto the branch. And said, Lord, help me. Lord, are you out there? I put my trust in you. Help me, O oh Lord. And he heard a voice from heaven. My dear son, do you trust me? With everything in my being. Let go, I'll catch you. <laughs> Says so there someone else there? <laughs> now, what that means is. All right? If it's done my own way, or oh, there's no way. Yeah, you follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm saying where people, look, look, the deciding factor in this faith work is whether it's your will or God's will. Let, let me tell you where the boys are separated from the men. If you miss it here, there is no platform for you to stand in the realm of the spirit. You will see men like David, even when they took their goods, they will ask God, should we go or not go? 
they will inquire of the Lord to find out what is God's will. Are you following me? In other words, you go up because, listen, and until you find the scriptures that speak to it, you haven't gotten a release. What you are doing is wishful thinking. Do you get what I'm saying? You can rest the scripture is your problem. I'm telling you, it won't work. You know when you look at the scripture, one part looks like he's saying it, the other part says, I didn't say it. <laughs> are you from there? Or you are quoting it, and as you finish quoting it, the Holy Ghost says, but when that thing was said, didn't you see what was said with it? It doesn't fit your situation. Let's look for your own. You say no. <laughs> Are you from saying that? You are quoting recover, restore, like David, but the conditions under which that word was given to David, as you are saying it and you look at it, five points come out. This is not you. <laughs> or you say no, recover. <laughs> are, are you from saying then you get to another scripture and it jumps out. If they take your cloak, give them your coat, it fits. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? You say, God, that coat, that, listen, we are even trying to recover the cloak. You are <laughs> suggesting we give more again. This is not what we're saying. And then he says, but look down. Give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaken. He said, no. The, I'm not releasing the coat. I'm looking for the scripture that gives me back the clock. Are you following me? Saying? Listen to any giant in faith. The beginning is the surrender. So, you may say you're not doing a game. Just decide now. Christianity is not, God is not going to use his power to fulfill your lust. He is going to use his power to fulfill his will in and through you. And he says, follow through on my will. Nothing you can imagine will match what I want to do. So, you can fall in love with a person the person walks away, you go to God for scripture, for restoration, and God says, I did not send you. The scripture I'm giving you is there's a bomb in Gilead. You know what that means? <laughs> we will heal you and you'll go on with your life. <laughs> you say recover, restore. Re Listen, they can't prophesy anything on you. In five days it will be back. Nothing is coming as far as God is concerned. Are you following saying? Yes, if you worship, you will hear God. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? If you truly worship, which means God, I can feel pain, but it's what you say. Are you following saying? So you open up your heart, all right, to Him in worship and go into the innermost court. When you get into the Amos call, then worship your praise in him and say, God, I am here to hear what you have to say concerning that particular thing. So you might have had a testimony of the fact that somebody was living in the house and the landlord gave him the house. And you are trying to quote that. And God shows you, you will pay for your own house. <laughs> uh, do you understand what I'm saying? All right? Because it says, show me where I told you. And then you know that you know you don't have anything. You know there's no scripture. You want it to happen, but there's no scripture. You will like it to happen, but there's no persuasion. But if you just turn 
and say, all right, God, what says thou? Wisdom said, if you turn at my reproof, I will pour my spirit upon thee, and I will make my words known unto thee. And let me tell you, I can't tell you a lie. Let me tell you the truth. The cross means you come to places in your life, your natural self wants right, and the will of God is left. Is that what I said? In other words, your natural self, you come into those places where your natural self and your soulish desire is, I want to do this. Some of it might just be aspiration from your childhood. You saw somebody you liked and you want to be like that person. And that's not who God called you to be. Are you from what I'm saying? Now, I'm saying this because this is where we need power. All right? Faith starts where the will of God is revealed to a person. There is nowhere in the scriptures you will find that a person, nowhere in the Bible, that a person just decided. God always reveals his will, all right, to people. So you go into that inner court there, and once he reveals it, he says, look, what I want to show you, he says, up to half of my kingdom you can get this. All right? Now, why are we not... Seeing that kind of power as of all time was that Elijah prayed the sound he heard from heaven. If you don't pray the sound you hear from heaven, then you can't get the results heaven gives. Are you following me? All right? And I'm, I'm tired. I, I even say on social media, people are tired of motivational speaking because it's motivation that is causing the problem in Christianity. If you think it, you can have, listen to me. We just say things to people and people start build their lives on that. Desire, require, refire, <laughs> and so on. And people. <laughs> Are you following me? Somebody's telling you, do you have a problem? Telling you how to make millions. You, have you made the millions? No. Trim it, trim it. No, <laughs> nightmares. Because. <laughs> So please, Christianity is not motivational speaking. All right? So you go. I'm trying to save you. So you go. Have there been things that you want and God says no? As in, he tells you that's not it. Yes. That things that your heart, you want to do. All right? Like, also, also I had a conversation in my heart about something. I said, I'm not doing it. Have you looked at conferences that you say, I want to come here? And the reason I'm not sending you to the conference. All right? I remember Bishop Rodrigo and Dr. Fred Price built the faith dome there, in, in, and that was the center every faith man wanted to be. He said he had boarded, he had checked in. The Holy Ghost told him, I did not tell you to go to California. He left the luggage. Said Dr. Fred Price called him. He said, This is, how did he describe it? When you say this is the place everybody in the faith world wants to sit, you turn down my invitation. Said the Holy Ghost said no. Are you following? So it's based upon that. So person, but you have to understand something. That's why it says, acquaint thyself with him and be at peace. God has something to say about every situation. And if he tells you I'm not doing that, it's because he's telling you because I'm doing this. Do you get what I'm saying here? He's saying, I am not opening that door because this is the door that is opened up for you. All right? So the starting point, the Bible tells us in Daniel that the horn that war, they went to war with the saints prevailed until the ancients of days came 
and the books were opened and the judgment was set. The turning point begins when the book is opened and then judgment is set. Then a person can now make their request, all right, known unto God. And that's why, that's why, look, when you are self-willed, this is what leads to depression and faith. When you are self-willed, look, one, you can't control life. You cannot. Neither can you dominate any person of value. Anybody that knows their self-worth, they can't allow you to dominate them. So, if you think you can, with self-will, control and dominate, listen, it's not going to happen. If you overdo it to a spiritual man, they will take you to God in prayer. <laughs> and God, when he says he will rebuke you, <laughs> listen, when God rebukes, you go and read the scripture, when God rebuked the man, he says everything on your lap should be wiped out. So, it's not what you want to do. So, in order to be happy, just say, God, it is your will I will follow so that as the lily grows without toiling or spinning, so will the earth yielding its increase. Without me struggling to control anybody's will, people will decide to help me in this. where you'll be surprised at the commitment of people to you and your project. Do you get what we're saying here? Rather than you trying to force people to do what you want them to do. Uh, you get what I'm So once that will of God is revealed, we've said this here, right? Once a person says, that the lawyer says, this is the position of the law concerning this situation. This is the position of the scriptures concerning this situation. Then uh, you make your request known unto God and you petition him concerning that particular thing. And then we said, once a supplication is therefore made unto God, a written petition, here is God's word concerning this. Here is what your word has said concerning this. Here is what your word has said concerning this. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask based on these four scriptures. I ask based on these four scriptures. Okay, I remember once I, there was something that happened. I was reaching for something. I was confessing a scripture that says that uh, and, and kings will send for you. And as, as I was saying, kings will send. I knew nobody is sent. <laughs> because the condition under which the king sent for Joseph was not my condition. Mm -hmm. Then I found another scripture that says, and you will go and be accepted. Then I realized. But out of spiritual pride, you two want to sit and say, kings will send. They will send. Do you get what I'm saying here? Then when I confessed the other one that seemed more, not as spectacular as King said, it entered my heart straight. Do you get what I'm saying? So people are saying things their heart doesn't connect with because what God has shown them is not what they're trying to reach. <laughs> 